Hey everyone, it's Dave, N6AFV, with a, another episode of Ham Topics. Um, DMR is a very popular digital radio format, and there's a lot of people that have recently uh, gotten interested in DMR because of the availability of low-cost DMR-capable radios. Two of the radios are these two little guys right here. This is the Titera or TYT MD380, and this is the Connect Systems CS580. Now, both of these are nice, what I would call entry-level radios. They're not the greatest radios in the world. They're not the most rugged, but for people who are just trying out DMR, they're a decent choice. A question came up on a DMR net uh, a couple of weeks ago where someone asked me uh, which radio did I prefer, the CS580 or the MD380, and uh, I explained on the air kind of the things that I liked about each of the different radios and, and why someone would might, uh, might want to buy them. So in this video, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of these two radios so that a person who's looking to enter the DMR world will have some information that would allow them to make an informed choice. So without any further ado, we'll go right to the comparisons between the two radios. We'll talk about the CS580 first. Now, uh, as you see on the slide, here's a list of kind of some of the key features. Number one, the cost of the radio presently, um, as of, um, I guess, you know, February of 2017, is $130 and the programming cable is $10 extra. However, it's possible that you may actually have a programming cable hiding in the packaging somewhere. That's when I bought my radio, um, the, there was a programming cable in there, so I really didn't need to buy another cable. Anyhow, but it does include the charger and clip. The CPS and the firmware update software are free. You can download them online and they, they work pretty well. I haven't had any issues with the CS580, uh, either the CPS software or the firmware update uh, software. No issues, no, no glitches, no crashes, no nothing. Now then, the big advantage to the CS580 is the fact that uh, as, you, as you get it out of the box, it's pretty much ready to go and can be used without having to have a CPS uh, program. However, one thing that has to be done, the radio has to have at least one channel programmed into it. And uh, as the radio comes out of the box, Connect Systems actually has, uh, they got a couple of channels, I believe, programmed into the radio, so you can use it right away. But without having any channels programmed in, if you try and use any of the enhanced features, you're just going to get an error message that says there's, there's nothing in that channel. But assuming that you have at least one channel programmed into the radio, then you can use the enhanced scan, enhanced monitor, and enhanced parameters to look for active uh, frequencies uh, in your area. And I've done some videos on my YouTube channel, N6AFV, that explain how to use these features. I'm not going to, uh, to get into that right away. Now the radio is dustproof and waterproof to what's called IP54 standards. Now that particular standard is one that IP stands for ingress protection and uh, the five in there indicates the highest level of resistance to dust getting into the radio. The four indicates that it'll withstand water splashed on it for some certain period of time, but it's not designed to be fully immersed. So basically, if you're walking in the rain, something like that, the radio is going to be just fine. You're not going to get any significant amount of water inside. But if you drop it over the side of your boat, uh, hopefully you can catch it quick before it starts sinking, because once it starts going underwater, uh, it's not guaranteed to prevent water from getting in. One downside of the CS580 is the fact that it has no accessories yet other than the programming cable. Now, I like to use a little speaker mic with my radios because, uh, particularly with the handhelds, because that allows me to clip it to my belt and then have the speaker mic clipped onto a lapel or something like that. Unfortunately, nothing like that is available for the CS580 yet. Um, 
When I brought that up with the Connect Systems people here in the U.S., they said it's being worked on, but if that's an issue for you, uh, you might have to consider another radio. The antenna is what's called a, what I'm going to call a normal gender SMA male, and uh, what that means is that the radio has a connector that it's got threads, internal threads, and a, and a um, metal a male terminal for the antenna connection and that is exactly opposite that of what the MD380 has but it is similar to what you'll find on like a like a Baofeng um, regular FM handheld radio so if you have antennae and stuff that you've gotten for your Baofeng it'll work with the Connect Systems 580 the other thing that's really nice about the Connect Systems 580 is the fact that you get some good local support from their representatives here in the U.S. I had a couple of questions when I first got my radio and I was able to uh, both email and call the office and immediately get some help. With the MD380, maybe not so much, but we'll talk about that when we discuss the MD380 characteristics and advantages and disadvantages. The MD380, um, as you'll notice when we look at the next slide, has uh, one big advantage over the CS580, and that's a lower street price. Typically, I've seen them as low as $95, which includes the cable, charger, and clip. So it's essentially set up the same as the CS580, with one exception, is that the, the uh, MD380 typically will come with a programming cable. The CPS and the firmware software are available. The firmware upgrade software are available online. They're free to download. However, my experience has been I have more glitches and kind of peculiar behavior with the MD380 software. Uh, one of the things that uh, has happened more than once is for whatever reason when I connect the radio to the computer. The computer says the radio is connected, but when I actually go to program the code plug-in, for whatever reason, the, the software doesn't seem to know that the radio is there, and it crashes. It doesn't give you an error that says something like, I don't see a radio out there. It just crashes. You have to start over, uh, and hopefully you have saved your code plug before you went to the programming process. However, uh, that's a that's a minor issue and it doesn't really detract a whole lot from the usability of the radio. Uh, let's see, the uh, MD380 pretty much requires CPS software before you can do anything useful with it. Even if the manufacturer sends it to you with channels programmed in, the fact is that in stock form, you're not going to be able to do much other than use those channels. So you really do need to download the CPS software and generate a code plug. It's not terribly difficult. And if you look at the videos that I've done for the CS580, um, you'll find that actually generating code plug is pretty straightforward. It's mainly a matter of gathering the necessary information so that you can put the information to the different fields as you're as you're programming the channels. Now this radio is claimed to be dust proof and waterproof to IP54 standards and that's according to the manufacturer's website that's the same as the CS580. I've heard some people say that the uh, the physical construction of the radio is not as good as other radios. I, I don't know that for certain. To me the the way that the switches and controls feel is basically identical the cases look pretty much the same as far as construction everything. I've dropped my MD380 multiple times onto uh, dirt, carpet. Uh, I don't think I've dropped one onto like a concrete, concrete floor from five feet or anything like that, but just normal wear and tear handling and have not had any, any problems with it. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Now one big advantage of the uh, MD380 is the fact that it can use the Kenwood style audio accessories. That's the uh, the little two pin connector uh, type and I'm going to put a little picture here that shows uh, just kind of a comparison between the MD380 and the CS580 so you'll know what I'm talking about. 
The antenna type is the opposite of the CS580. Um, so it's different from the CS580 and from the other inexpensive uh, Baofeng Chinese radios, but it's not, a, it's not a problem. You can find other antennas as accessories for the, um, for the Titera radio very easily. I, I bought a, uh, a bunch of different adapters so I can put a lot of different types of uh, other connectors on the radio, so that's not an issue. Now one thing about the, the MD380 that so far is pretty much exclusive to that radio as far as I know is that um, several people have made the effort to hack the firmware that comes on the radio and they've rewritten the firmware to add new features. Um, one of which is the ability to install the entire DMR ID database into the radio. So when you're listening to the radio and someone comes on on a talk group, if they have a valid DMR ID, it's, the radio is going to pop up a screen and it's going to show that person's call, their name, and their location of record in the DMR database, which is really kind of nice because I'm like most other people, I suppose. I, I'll hear people, they'll give their, their uh, call on the radio and either I, I won't understand it or I'll forget it or they'll say it in such a way that it's not clear because they won't use phonetics. They'll just try and say the letters or they'll use some goofy phonetics that something they made up um, with the, the uh, ID feature that's really nice. However, that does not come stock on the radio and that's what we're talking about is the radios as they come from the manufacturer. So if that's an issue with you, uh, then you might be very interested in getting the MD380 because you can mess with it. Um, disadvantages of the MD380, one of them is, is that at least until very, very recently, there has been basically no real support. I heard a rumor that there is a company in the U.S. that's going to start making parts available. I don't know what level that's going to be, whether you're going to be able to buy cases, uh, LCD displays, controls, I'm not sure what that's going to be, but hopefully it will be something better than trying to get service from companies in China that sell these radios. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's it. Two good radios. Uh, which one you want is going to depend on what you want to do with them. They both work well. I've used both radios. On-air reports of audio have been good from both radios. Haven't had any problems with them. So I'd say you're going to be happy with either one. Just look at the features, decide what you want to do, how much money you want to spend, uh, whether you want the local support, whether you want to be able to update firmware and experiment with the radio more, and that'll help you make a good decision as to which radio you want to buy. Till next time, Dave, N6AFV73. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please click the like button. And if you'd like to get updates whenever new videos are posted, please subscribe to the channel. And whenever I pop something new on there, you'll get an email that tells you that it's available to watch. 73 from Dave, N6AFB.